this physical, resurrected body that eats fish. <laughs> it's not a ghost. That's the whole point of this text. It's saying that it's different than a ghost. Resurrection is not about a resurrected body, but it is not about a ghost. Suddenly, Jesus is there, and he sets them free from their fears. Today, we need such transformation. Can you imagine us sitting here this morning and Jesus simply just appearing? These disciples had a myriad of emotions in that time. They were startled and terrified, and they hear this message of peace be with you. And he invites them to touch and see this earthly flesh. And he encourages them to move beyond where they are, even though he meets them where they are. Which then moves them to the next emotion, which is joy, but they're still disbelieving and questioning what's going on here. And then he sends them out. He commissions them to be witnesses. Oh, there's another one of those words we don't like. <laughs> Witness. What does that word conjure up for you? Does it conjure up images of someone coming and knocking on your door? Does it conjure up images of people standing on a corner and handing out tracts to you? commissioned them to be witnesses. Remember, they were hiding behind locked doors because they were afraid. It's okay. Let the kids make noise. I can handle it. I, they're, they're, they're babies. They're going to make noise. Just, it's okay. It's cool. So my question for us today isn't about the resurrected body of Jesus eating fish, but it's to question us about what are the locked doors we are hiding behind. Do you lock the door when you see the witnesses coming to ring your doorbell? <laughs> I know a lot of people don't answer that door. You'll pretend like you're not home. I've told a few of you this, but I find that really fun. <laughs> That's sport for me. <laughs> I have a great time. And they don't usually come back. <laughs> come do some of my Bible study with me. I'll teach you how to do that. <laughs> What are the locked doors we hide behind? Some of them are personal. We don't want to hear about illness. We definitely don't want to hear that big C word, that cancer word, do we? We don't want to face unemployment or loneliness or loss. We're afraid of terrorist attacks. We're afraid of death, our own or that of our loved ones. I think often our fears hold us captive and it becomes difficult to witness to the joy of resurrection. The joy that Jesus, with Jesus, death doesn't have the last word. Oh, but there's that witness word. Witness is nothing more than you telling your story of how 
sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in your life. And how you have been changed by that joyous news. That's what the disciples did. And that is what Jesus called them to. And he knew that they had to get out from behind those closed and locked doors to be able to witness and change the world as they knew it, which changes the world as we know it. And the power of resurrection isn't about eating fish. It is the power to plant the seeds of transformation. That's what witnesses. closed minds. The disciples' closed minds, even our closed minds, can be opened and we are called to peace rather than security. Hiding behind our fears just keeps us locked up. How are we to be released from our fears to be able to witness to God's good news. By the resurrection of Jesus, God was saying to the world, this isn't about you. God has been God all along. It's about God. Just when they thought it was over, God does something else to say, it's always been about God. Jesus did not try to explain the mechanics of resurrection. Instead, he taught them, he invited them, and he commissioned them. It was all about God and what God was doing in the world, and it still is. In our crazy, mixed-up world, the craziness is not the final word. It's in that craziness that Jesus is going to show up. Working on the wholeness and the wellness of the entire community. So here's an example. And some of you did go down to help with some of the rebuilding efforts after Hurricane Katrina. But the events of Hurricane Katrina did not create the glaring pictures of poverty and despair, as we certainly saw that following the hurricane. But the events exposed Yesterday, an absolutely glorious day, Pat and I went on a very long walk. We did this thing called a progressive worship walk. This was something that the Presbyterians put together, and there were somewhere between 30 and 50 of us on and off throughout the day. We started at Brynmore. Presbyterian Church at 8.30 in the morning with a call to worship. And we started walking. And as we walked, we'd stop at the next Presbyterian Church down the road and the next one, we had a prayer of confession. And the following church, we had the assurance of forgiveness. And each church we stopped at, we had a part of a worship service. It was Amazing. We walked from Bryn Mawr to Center City. It was supposed to be 10 miles. It was more like 11. <laughs> it was a long walk. <laughs> but there was no hiding behind. Because not only did we have the glorious opportunity to
be in each other's churches. But imagine the faces of people along the way as they watched 30 or 40 white folks <laughs> in blue t-shirts walking in mass down the road or on the sidewalk. Not once was I feeling fear or trepidation. But I did get to see firsthand a lot of folks who are in desperate need. You can't miss it along the way. But you have to get out from behind the locked doors to be able to see them. What in our communities needs the presence of the living Christ? Every single person along the way that we saw greeted us with a smile and hello. How amazing. What kinds of experiences and understandings do we need so that we can be credible witnesses to God's aim for the world? For that peace be with you that Jesus cried out to those disciples. What is it in our communal response to God's presence and work in the world that we need to pay attention to? And how do we participate in the work of God on this earth? No matter how we answer these questions, our commission to declare God's presence and power in the midst of tragedy, despair, and death, that's what Jesus is calling us to. That's the witness. They aren't the end. Because God is. Jesus is alive. And God wants, desires, and aims to redeem and reclaim us in new ways. Jesus makes himself known to us in big ways and in small ways. And as people of faith, we are to be witnesses of Christ's presence among us in our words and in our deeds. As it was for those disciples long ago who changed the world as anyone would ever know. Our faith demands nothing less. Will you pray? God, you have invited us, like those disciples of long ago, to reach out and touch his hands and his side, and to know that he is alive and well among us. Open our spirits, our very beings, to witness and tell of your good news with every deed and every word we say, may we be your witnesses of your peace and your justice. Transform us once again, O Holy One, that we may be your faithful disciples saying yes, send us.
foundation stone too. And sometimes it's a stone like this. But more than that, the stone, the cornerstone, the thing that we build the church on is even bigger than any stone like this ever could be. What do you think that might be? Jesus. You think? Yeah. Jesus is the stone. Jesus is the foundation that we build the church on. Because without Jesus, there's no point in us even being here. We'd be a very different community. We might be a club. But we're not a club. We're the church. And Jesus is the rock that we build our church on. Or brick. Hmm? Or brick. Or brick. <laughs> Jesus is the rock or the brick. We're the foundation that is undergirding everything that we do. So we need to remember that, especially as we celebrate 40 years together as a faith community. Colin Brook started 40 years ago. And we're celebrating an anniversary coming up this year. 40 years. That's way older than you are. But younger than I am. <laughs> Everyone heard it. Everyone heard it? <laughs> Darn. My secret's out. <laughs> but so is the secret that God is the foundation. That Jesus is the foundation of who we are as a faith community. Will you pray for me? God, help us to remember that Jesus is the reason that we gather here, that it is upon Jesus and our faith in you and in him that we build this church into the good news church that you would have us be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi! <laughs> Shall I? 